This is an Awata Revolution airbrush. They cost £135 and mine, well, it's not working anymore. I need a new one, but I don't want to spend another £135, so I find this airbrush for £20 instead. And today I'm going to see if it's as good or better as an airbrush over six times more expensive. Here's the thing, at some point in your journey as a miniature painter, you're going to start looking at airbrushes and they can be a hefty investment. Not only do you need to buy the airbrush, but you've also got to buy an air compressor and any other miscellaneous accessories you may need. Adding all of this up and you easily could be hitting a price point of £200 for your first airbrush. Now my first airbrush, this Iwata airbrush, was fantastic. Fantastic. It's well built, it's performed amazingly, but even though I watched a ton of YouTube videos about it, I, I didn't really know what I was doing and I didn't know how to properly care for it. So after a few years of not being properly cared for, it has slowly started to kick the bucket. And while I've learned a lot about airbrushes, I don't think I'm ready to drop another £135 on a new one, just in case I'm not as knowledgeable as I thought. And that's where this comes in. This is the TimberTech ABP ST01 airbrush kit and it'll cost you £22.95 on Amazon. And I know what you're thinking, if a good airbrush is usually at least £100, then this one for £20 must be crap, right? Actually, you're wrong. <laughs> This £20 airbrush comes with four different needle sizes to give you more choice and control over what you paint. There's equally a tube to connect the airbrush to your compressor as well as an adapter just in case you need it. I didn't need this tubing as I, I actually already had one from my previous airbrush, but it's a nice touch that it's there in the package. There are some droppers just in case you want to use those to add your paint to the paint tank or water it down. Speaking of the paint tank, I actually greatly prefer the TimberTech tank to the Awata one. You see on my Awata there's a tiny lip where the tank meets the main body of the airbrush and what I found is that it was very easy for bits of paint to get stuck in there and lead to clogs. On the TimberTech, it's wide open and it's really easy for me to get a cotton swab in there and clean this part of the paint tank. The build quality of the airbrush is fine, my expectations weren't massively high for a £20 airbrush, but it feels solid and it fits well in the hand. So how does it paint? Well, it actually paints really well, uh, if not just as well as my Iwata. Now here are a few items I've used the airbrush on, like these tents, uh, and equally to paint the blue on the ultramarine here, uh, and each time the paint has gone on smoothly and evenly. If I had one issue, and it's not a major issue, it's that even at fully open, the airbrush will still take some time to empty the tank. I noticed this especially in the cleaning process where I'll, I'll fill it up with water, hold it fully open, and, and like I say, it's not a major issue, but I felt I had to say something negative so that it doesn't appear like I'm, I'm trying to get a sponsorship deal from TimberTech or something. So would I recommend you buy this airbrush if you're thinking about getting your first one? Absolutely, but with a caveat. Finding these cheap airbrushes on Amazon is a bit of a lucky dip. By the time you're watching this, the one I've linked in the video description may actually already be sold out. Always be sure to read the reviews and if the model you get is faulty, be sure to return it as soon as you can. One of the reasons we usually buy an airbrush though is because we think that our miniatures look awful and a device like this could really help us up our painting game. This video right here though is going to explain exactly why your miniatures look awful and what you can do about it. So save yourself some time and money, check it out next.